Hey, welcome back! Today we are diving into the exciting world of UI design patterns for mobile development – MVC, MVP and NVVM. Now, let me clarify something important. These acronyms don't refer to app architectures, but rather to design patterns specifically tailored for the presentation layer of your app. These design patterns provide a framework to help organize and streamline the logic and responsibilities related to rendering, formatting, event handling, routing, and data model management. Their primary goal is to improve modularity, testability, and readability of your app's code. All right, let's jump right into the first pattern, MVC. MVC has been around since way back in 1978, when it was created as a general solution to the problem of giving users control over the information they see on their devices. Since its inception, MVC has garnered significant interest, leading to various interpretations and implementations by different companies and individuals. We have three main entities in this design pattern. The model is responsible for the domain data or the data access layer that manipulates the data. The view focuses on the presentation layer. In the iOS environment, it is everything starting with UI prefix. And the controller acts as a mediator between the model and the view. It receives user actions from the view and updates the model and view accordingly. Implementing the traditional MVC pattern in iOS app poses architectural challenges. The tight coupling among the model, view and controller entities creates interdependencies introducing complexities and limiting flexibility in your app's architecture. Fast forward to the present day, and let's see how Apple has modified the MVC pattern to fit iOS frameworks like UIKit. The main difference is that the view and the model don't know about each other. They communicate through the controller. Apple made this decision because views in the mobile applications are often highly reusable. By avoiding tight coupling between the view and the model, we can avoid the need to re-implement views for different models. Apple's idea behind MVC was to have a model-independent view. On the other hand, the controller, which handles tricky business logic, is the least reusable component. In theory, this all sounds straightforward, but you might sense that something feels off, right? You may have even heard people referring to MVC as a massive view controller. It turns out that view controller offloading has become a significant concern for iOS developers. But why does this happen if Apple took the traditional MVC pattern and made improvements? Let's get back to reality. Take a look at this diagram that illustrates how MVC works in real-world iOS development. One of the reasons why the massive view controller problem arises is because in practice, UI view controller is tightly coupled with the view. While you can move some business logic and data transformation to the model, the view controller ends up becoming a delegate and data source for everything, leading to its rapid growth in size. This issue may not be evident until you encounter unit testing. Due to the tight coupling between the view controller and the view, testing becomes challenging. You have to be very creative in mocking views and their life cycles while writing the view controller's code in such a way that your business logic is separated from view layout code as much as possible. Given these challenges, it becomes apparent that Apple's MVC is not ideal design pattern to choose. It may be suitable if you don't want to invest much time in your architecture, or if you believe that the higher maintenance cost is an overkill for your tiny pet project. Let's move on to a more advanced design pattern, MVP, which stands for Model View Presenter. At first glance, it may appear similar to Apple's MVC, but there is an important distinction. In MVP, the view controller is considered a view responsible only for view-related code, while all the logic resides in the presenter. Here's how the components are described in MVP. The view now consists of both views and view controllers, handling UI setup and events. The presenter takes charge of all the logic, including responding to user actions and updating the UI via delegate. And the most important thing, the presenter is not dependent on UI kit, making it well isolated and easily testable. And the role of the model remains the same as an MVC handling data-related tasks. It is worth noting that MVP follows a passive view pattern. This means that all actions are forwarded to presenter, which triggers UI updates using delegates. 
The view simply passes actions and listens for updates from the presenter. Now let's address an issue introduced by the MVP pattern, assembling the dependency graph. Since MVP has three separate layers and we don't want the view to have knowledge of the model, it's not appropriate to perform assembly within the view controller, which is considered a view in this design pattern. We need to handle assembly somewhere else. One approach is to use a separate assembly class or introduce a rotor responsible for assembling and routing between screens in the app. Let's consider the characteristics of the MVP pattern. Distribution of responsibilities among entities. The majority of responsibilities are divided between the presenter and the model with a relatively simple view. Testability. MVP excels in this aspect as we can easily test most of the business logic. Ease of use. The amount of code is greater compared to MVC, but the core idea and structure of MVP is clear. Let's now explore the MVVM design pattern, which stands for Model View View Model. MVVM shares similarities with MVP, where the view control is treated as a view. Also, there is no tight coupling between the view and the model. The main difference is that it has pending between the view and the view model. So, what exactly is a view model? It is basically a UI kit independent representation of your view and its state. The view model invokes changes in the model and updates itself with the updated model. Thanks to the binding between the view and the view model, the view is automatically updated accordingly. But how do we implement this binding? There are multiple approaches. We can create a simple implementation based on the observer pattern ourselves or leverage existing libraries. One option is to use KVO-based binding libraries like SwiftBond. Alternatively, we can embrace full-scale reactive programming solutions such as Eric Swift, Combine, or PromiseKit. Nowadays, the most popular MVVM implementation revolves around reactive frameworks like Eric Swift. While it's possible to build MVVM with simple bindings, reactive frameworks like Eric Swift unlock the full potential of MVVM. However, it is essential to acknowledge that with great power comes great responsibility. Going reactive can introduce challenges, and if things go wrong, debugging can become complex due to the extensive call stack. Now, let's compare the characteristics of MVVM with MVP. The view in MVVM has more responsibilities compared to the view in MVP. It updates its state from the view model through bindings, whereas the MVP view simply forwards events to the presenter without updating itself. In terms of testability, the view model is easily testable since it knows nothing about the view. While the view can also be tested, its UI kit dependencies might make testing less desirable. In terms of code, MVVM tends to be leaner due to the presence of bindings, whereas MVP requires manual forwarding of events to the presenter and manual view updates. We've covered several architectural patterns and I hope you found some answers to the questions that were on your mind. However, it's important to recognize that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Choosing an architecture pattern is a matter of carefully weighting the trade-offs based on your specific situation. Before we wrap up, I want to share an exciting resource with you. There is an amazing GitHub repository called Awesome iOS Architecture. This repository is packed with links to informative posts and example projects that showcase the implementation of different design patterns. If you're considering trying out a new design pattern, I highly recommend checking it out. And that's a wrap for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and leave your thoughts in the comment section. I would be delighted to address any questions you might have. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.